Crypto has remained in this range for what feels like an eternity, and it's certainly having its negative consequences on the industry. In fact, I would argue that this is one of the most mentally challenging, emotionally damaging cycles that crypto has ever endured. Despite that, I am still very bullish that we will see an extremely positive resolution towards the end of this year and into next year. But before we get there, I want to recap everything going on and how I'm positioning. And at the end of this video, I'll share with you a new major position I took. And of course, it's crypto related, but it is totally different than what you are expecting. And this is one that I'm actually extremely excited to share with you. And yes, I know it's been a while since my last episode. Again, I'm not trying to just crank out content to crank out content. I want to make sure that I have something significant to say every time we meet here on the intergalactic YouTubes. And throughout the volatility of the last few weeks, I didn't sell. I was holding on to my coins. I didn't want to make panic crash fueled content. And of course, despite these crashes, once again, Bitcoin is back up around $60,000. So what did we accomplish by making urgent crash related videos about Japan or whatever? To me, it only damages the audience to make those kinds of videos. So I want to make sure that we're staying on track here, long term mindset and not getting too lost in the ups and downs. That's why I didn't make content around these volatile weeks because I wasn't doing anything. But back to the main topic at hand. Crypto is facing an existential crisis of sorts. And I believe that this is representing a spiritual low before the next cycle. Let me explain. This chop is worse than 2022 in many ways. In 2022, people had made enormous gains from 2021, so they had the luxury to give back gains. They could afford to be wrong and lose. Plus, 2022 was clearly a downtrending market, and anyone with half a brain knew this was a bear market. Of course, 2022 fit the 2018 and 2014 bear market fractal, the second year after the halving that historically is very bearish, so people who were experienced, like myself and this audience, knew to sell and GTFO and protect their bags. It's not as easy when the Bitcoin ETF gets approved, the Ethereum ETF gets approved, all of Wall Street is buying tens of billions of dollars of Bitcoin. It feels like the market is on the SpaceX launch pad about to get Giga sent into Mars. Yes, that's not quite the same feeling. You don't really have that protective instinct in these situations. And so this sideways chop where alts have gotten very, very badly damaged is not what we were expecting and certainly feels worse in a lot of ways than a bear market that we actually did expect. So if you're feeling that way, just know, you're not alone. In fact, even for me, this has been super challenging because the market just doesn't feel quite the same. But it goes deeper than that. 90%, if not more, of the market participants here are getting smoked. Look, you don't need to be making profit right now. You just need to be surviving. Ensure that you do not lose it all before the chop is done. We're trading in an environment that is giga bullish for crypto, yet we're chopping diagonally downwards and sideways. In a bull market, chop by very nature is created to eliminate impatient traders before continuing upwards. If you've been getting bodied, do not feel bad. I saw some of the brightest minds get crushed in 2022. Now I'll go further, a step further and say it's even harder because builders like me, people who are actually constantly building things, trying to organize around technology use case for consumers, etc., are being outshined by literal meme coins, literal pictures that have absolutely no tech, no team, nothing behind them, except for people screaming for a number to go up. And so you have all of this effort, all of this painstaking, literally many years in the making. And I can tell you it is soul crushing to build through bear markets, to constantly have to be the light of optimism when other things around you are so dark, and then it's not rewarded as much as a coin with literally zero effort behind it. Those are the things that are really causing a spiritual low to form here in crypto. And I'll go so far as to say tinfoil hat here. I think there are pretty sinister forces that are trying to make this happen. If you were trying to kill crypto, I would try to poison the culture itself. You see, the culture of crypto is one that is hard to destroy. It's a hodl culture. It's a belief culture. It can be considered downright religious. So in order to break the crypto community, the government coming in and squishing it or being perceived to squish it only makes the crypto community feel stronger, more emboldened, like they're fighting a great evil. But if you poison the culture and make it so that the actual community itself turns on the most optimistic builders, the ones who are idealistic, who believe in the future of this technology to actually improve the world, well, you've now poisoned the very core of the engine that makes crypto indestructible. 
So I would be very careful here not to buy in too much into the anti-utility narratives. As I've said many times before, meme coins are a part of the market, but in my opinion, they are not the core of the market. And if they ever become the core of the market, crypto has other problems. And I believe that it becomes much weaker. That's my personal belief. Last cycle, you had the chads on top. Another L1 ape, 90% exploit ape. 29,383,723% APY ape. Only 100 million market cap ape. This cycle, another L1, VC scam. CPI next week, flat. 4% T-bills, ape. Already 100K market cap, too late. And now that people went all in on memes, of course, memes are getting cooked. I told you this was going to happen at some point. There was going to be a supply exhaustion. There's just too many memes coming out. So the spiritual low is being formed here. And this is what makes it so hard. You have all of these bullish conditions, the ETF, all of these background tailwinds that are really heating up for crypto. And yet those who are investing with any kind of higher level logic, those who feel like they really get crypto are getting slammed over and over again. And even now, the meme coin traders who thought they had cracked the code are getting absolutely cooked. This is a recipe for a spiritual low, which I do think we are encountering in the next few weeks. Now, this tweet by Owen, I really like. He was trading memes pretty successfully. He actually called the top in memes back in July, if I remember correctly. He said, we are encountering a rare opportunity that only comes around every four years. We can't really predict how long it will last. Alts could bottom here next month or in Q4, but who even cares? Short-term fluctuations are irrelevant to me. Focus should be on accumulating coins that are in their first cycle and down 90% from their highs. I'm not touching dino coins or other other stuff that went hard in 2021 outside of the top 10 with a view towards 2025, which promises to be extraordinary. I actually like his thought here that altcoins are bottoming. However, I totally disagree with this because a lot of these new coins have insane amounts of token unlocks and inflation. So I think that most dino coins actually do have a risk of going extinct because they don't have great marketing. But if there are older, more mature coins that have amazing marketing that know how to build the community and don't have any more unlocks listed on all the exchanges, those to me are the perfect sweet spot. Spot. However, it is true that utility focused coins and some of the newer cool stuff will pump super hard. I think as a blanket rule, dino coins, maybe like Cardano are what he's referring to. Apologies to the Cardano fam, but I don't think this rule applies generally. Next year, you'll see these coins soaring and you'll know deep down that you had the chance to get in early, but you missed it because you're focused on scalping 5% moves at the stone cold bottom. Look, a bottom is forming a chance to buy into generational lows is forming. I believe we've been here for a while. Everything under 60K I've been saying since earlier this year was the time to buy. Of course, you guys know I've deployed every last red cent, every last nickel I've had. I've been digging through the couch cushions to find just a little bit of spare change to get more coins because I am pretty much all in here. And I made a significant buy over the course of the last few weeks that I'm gonna share with you again in a few minutes that is different than what I've presented to you here on the channel, but I think you'll enjoy it. Now I need to jump in here and thank our sponsor, NordVPN during this downward sideways chop. They are a light, a beacon in the distance for helping support the channel. And we really appreciate it. They make this possible. Of course, NordVPN is the most advanced VPN. If you don't use a VPN while you're in crypto, you're essentially like a little baby holding the candy, waiting for the bad guys to take the candy out of your hand. I don't know if you guys saw this, but 2.9 billion people may have had their social security numbers and other financial data compromised. This just happened. And so your goal in all situations needs to be limiting the amount of data that you let leak onto the internet. And there's no better way to do that than NordVPN. Obviously, you guys know I was hacked about a year and a half ago. It was extremely, extremely damaging. I was SIM swapped. A lot of my personal data that ended up on the dark web was used to effectuate and to carry out that attack. These are the attacks that you need to be preventing against. And NordVPN is the best of the best. I run it on my computer 24 seven, literally do not sleep on this product. There is a huge, big, fat, special, juicy discount for the Elio Trades audience. You can click on the link below. And of course, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. And so if you don't like it, you can get your money back. It's literally risk free. But I highly suggest if you don't use NordVPN, you use some VPN. If you use Nord, they're the best in the business and it supports the channel. So I thank you. As always, thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video and back to the episode. As Alo says here, every time I get bearish, I just remember that US debt is unsustainable and growing exponentially. They will choose to print infinite money rather than default. This is just the reality. The United States will never default on their debt. If they default on their debt, they're essentially giving up as a country and they're pretty much giving up on the dollar and the banking system. They will never do that. 
they will keep the music going at all costs, even knowing that inflation is potential or, or likely or guaranteed. So there really aren't many liquid assets you can hold with confidence for the long run to protect yourself against this huge inevitable debasement coming. But Bitcoin is one of those. And we know with Bitcoin, we will see certain assets go giga bullish. Not all of them, but certainly we've seen when Bitcoin ticks up, there are some alts that outperform. And we've seen previews of that already this year. I do think that utility will be the focus once Bitcoin is above all time high, though memes, of course, will have their day. We all know memes can run, but in a world where millions of memes are being created by the day, we'll talk about that in a minute. What is the actual chance of you hitting a winner? What is the upside of these memes? We'll talk about that down the road because I believe that the adjusted return for memes when you compare them to other high quality alts will actually be less exciting once Bitcoin is above all time highs convincingly. Now for the political stuff. Now, again, I'm sort of over the political stuff and I'll tell you why, because I think it's just become manipulation, right? We're constantly seeing these charts, right? One day, Donald Trump's at 70% promising to make crypto essentially the central policy of his uh, campaign. Then Kamala runs up and everybody's dumping crypto thinking she's going to attack the industry. Again, it's pretty undeniable that, you know, the policies of the Biden administration and so far what we've seen out of Harris have been very, very hostile towards crypto. Uh, we see Cameron Winklevoss going so far as to cross out the together we can win this, together we can kill crypto, crypto advocates for Harris. Uh, so this is the policy, this is what the people of the crypto industry feel towards the Harris campaign. Again, we still don't know for sure, but this is the general sentiment. But I've become pretty convinced that this chart is just total hogwash that nobody really knows. Uh, we can bet, we can guess, but we've seen polls be completely wrong. We've seen experts be completely wrong. And when the time comes to vote, we will find out who the next president is. But until then, these charts are just being used to manipulate your emotions. And so I am 100% backing away from anything to do with election predictions around the crypto markets. I think they have run their course and they are now more or less completely useless. So from this point on, I'm just gonna kind of stay away from the topic because I don't think it's useful in our trading anymore. Although of course, I hope that whichever regime comes into power next election cycle. Yeah, I hope they're friendly towards crypto. Certainly, of course I do. And of course we have central bank liquidity growing, growing, growing. We have the global supply of stable coins continuing to make its way upward now at, you know, pretty much the highest point it's been since the crash of Luna back in May of 2022. We've seen it now continually grow. Of course, it bottomed here uh, about September of 2023. This was the actual bottom of the market. And then we've seen things really grow from there. And while CT argues that crypto isn't good for anything, we're literally seeing the CEO of Robinhood talk about how on-chain transactions actually offload a tremendous amount of capital intensive work for exchanges, for settlement. And they think that the blockchain is really the future of products like theirs. I can't imagine that anyone would look at this and think anything other than this stuff is going to go to the moon. We know that the real players that be are circling the crypto shark tank with their fangs out because they see so much value in it. Meanwhile, we see the emotions in crypto reaching some of the lowest points that they've been in the last... I guess even eight years since I've been here. Now over to meme coins, I would say that what we've seen on pump.fun is really a full sale, wholesale destruction. And we warned that this would come because the new memes are coming in too fast. There's just nobody to buy them. Uh, in a random 24 hour period uh, recently, 16,000 tokens were created, 175 of them made it to radium. If you don't know what that means on pump fund, coins uh, only make it to radium, which is like an actual decentralized exchange on Solana once they reach a certain value. So you essentially have all these coins being created, but they just go nowhere. And then you have only 19 of the 16,000 survive 24 hours later. And that's not to say that they're doing anything now. You're essentially playing a lottery. This is probably less good odds than you would get at the California lottery or something like that. So just know this is what's happened to the trenches of meme coins. So now that you know that the trenches are pretty much cooked, the question is which meme coins, if meme coins become popular again, are even ones you can bet on. And again, it would go to the really proven strong communities, the Pepe's, the Mogs, uh, maybe the Whiffs. I'm mostly focused on Pepe and Mog personally. I think that they have the most staying power. I've made that pretty clear. But again, I've made it also very clear that this is high risk gambling stuff and that once they start going into their downward spirals, they can spiral very, very low. I've made that clear on every single video. But then we get the question, okay, with Pepe sitting here at a market cap of 3 billion, right? Obviously it's down about, what is this? It's down over 50, almost 60% from the top. It had a market cap of, I think almost 7 billion at the top, something crazy like that. The question is, where's the room for growth? You know, at 7 billion, three to 7 billion, 
you're talking about one of the biggest assets in the space. So if I'm looking at this asset at three to seven billion with just a meme behind it, is that as good of a bet as a strong asset under 500 million, as a strong asset under 100 million with a tremendous amount of utility and excitement and strong dev team and potential future catalysts that actually make sense to an investing public that uses logic and reason. I think that there is a case to be made that utility starts to look a lot better than memes as you see Bitcoin break above all time high and all of a sudden the tech is good again. That's certainly the rotation that I'm prepared for. And I believe that the tip of the spear there will be gaming and AI. Now we'll talk about how those will manifest, of course, in a second. But that's why I believe that we're at this spiritual low point an amazing opportunity, but also that it won't look exactly the same as the last six months because of fundamental changes that have happened in the meme coin market. Now, once again, the reason why we didn't jump in and cover this Japanese yen carry trade thing that I'm sure you guys heard about is because we're, we're not experts. I learned from 2022 that calling big macroeconomic events is almost impossible and that most of the people that tell you they're going to happen have been saying it's going to happen for 10 years. And then that was just the day that it happened. They claim that they were right all along. That's essentially what's been happening here with the macro bears. And so I believe that while these things are possible and a macro doomer recession depression of intergalactic proportions is possible, I believe that predicting that is very difficult. And the people who actually predict it will have done so incorrectly a, a gazillion times before it happens. So buying into that mess for me, it's a bridge too far. I'll believe it when I see it. But for now, it's really about understanding that I'm all in on this cycle theory. I believe that we'll have a cycle and that I have some cash set aside in case it all goes to zero. But for the most part, I'm fully committed. And every time I get new capital in, I'm putting it into the market, believing that this is investing at the lows when it feels uncomfortable. Because once it feels comfortable again, those prices will be so far away from my buys that I won't be worried. I won't be worried about the little fluctuations around 80 and 100K because all my buys will be so much lower. And that was the luxury I had over the last few months because I was buying in March of 2023. So to recap, the bear case here is relatively weak. Macro fear subsiding, Gaza peace coming, summer lull ending, high volume liquidity flush out already occurred, people quite comfortable with cycle overstatements, CZ release coming. This is one that I find quite funny. CZ's release, uh, who knows what that'll be? I mean, he was maybe talking about starting an education platform, but maybe he comes out and just giga pumps the market like an absolute chad. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm very excited to see what CZ does in the future, but who knows? Everybody's listing this as a bull case. Maybe it is. And look, Bitcoin's at 60K. Can we just not lose sight of the fact that Bitcoin is sitting here at $60,000 despite all of the drama, despite touching 50K, despite going from, you know, the highs and getting completely decimated. It's just sitting here casually at $60,000, which is to me a very nice price. It's close to the highest price it's ever been in its life. It's only, what is this? Uh, less than 20% off the high. It's just not that bad, but it feels like the end of the world. That's what it feels like. And so it's important to understand all of the factors at play here and understand how they work together to form a real thesis. So with only a few months between now and classic October, one of the best months for crypto, we actually have the World Health Organization coming out and declaring yet another pandemic, this time around MPOX. Apparently monkeypox is not what you're supposed to say. I don't know, whatever, MPOX. Look, this is crazy. This guy just came out and said, we have another pandemic. We need a global response. And if this is anything like the last time, which I'm sure it won't be exactly the same, like it can't, re it can't repeat the same. We know that people just won't buy in the same. This does literally spell out money printing. They already raised 500 billion. If they need to do some kinds of lockdowns or mass mandates or adjust anything based on this new pandemic in an election year, remember the last one was in an election year too. This is the recipe for another massive bull run because it will cause more stress on the economy. It will require more response and more support from the government. And that means more debasement. We know how this game works. So this happening to me, I don't know. History might rhyme. Uh, it certainly doesn't repeat exactly, but the rhyming, it's Eminem level, right? It's hitting every damn syllable. It's almost crazy. Slim Shady seems to be running the macro economy. That's all I can say. Now, this might come across like not a big piece of news, but I think it's actually insanely big. USDC on iPhones. Like, think about that. How many iPhones are there in the world and people can now pay with USDC? This essentially takes the crypto space and gets all that nasty, you know, gunky clutter of the exchanges out of the way and you can just pay with crypto. Imagine you have Pepe, you have whatever, you're part of the crypto space. Maybe you earn some crypto playing a video game. You swap it into USDC and you can now buy your groceries. That is insane. Uh, this mixed with some good tax policy that we see coming saying you don't really have to pay crypto gains on de minimis transactions, daily transactions. This could be the recipe for onboarding billions of people into USDC. Remember, everyone else's currency is utter dog doo-doo compared to the US dollar. So if this now becomes effectively available everywhere Apple Pay is, we could assume that it'll come to Google Pay and Samsung Pay soon. This could be a huge, huge piece of news. I think this is 
huge, personally. I wanted to just flag this article because I actually love this article. A crypto influencers on notice after FTC bans fake likes and followers. Now you may not know this, but a lot of people do fake and juice their followings. I personally have never done that uh, because I just always thought that's quite silly. I, I wanna know if I'm making good content. The only way to know if I'm making good content is to observe the actual audience response. Now there are a lot of great content creators that also only make content and see what people react to. I'm not saying that this is widespread amongst your favorite content creators, but the good ones are not worried right now. Uh, apparently the FTC is saying they could sue you if you're using fake likes and stuff. So I think that we may or may not, I mean, who knows, we may see a, a pretty big flush here around the uh, vanity metrics that people have been using. I know personally, we never use any of this stuff. So I'm very excited to see, you know, who is swimming naked when the tide rolls out. And also this, another massive piece of news, I think. MetaMask is launching a debit card. Again, imagine you can spend your, your value within MetaMask through a debit card. That's really, really sick. MetaMask is still the most ubiquitous wallet. This is a massive, massive thing. It just bridges that gap between all of our crazy asset world and the real world, which we often forget. You know, uh, these meme coins and these other coins that go parabolic. Yeah, that's worth a lot of money in your day-to-day -day life if you were using that to buy groceries. So uh, hopefully these two things, uh, the MetaMask launching the debit card as well as USDC, I think these are pretty massive. But now for the fun part. Now for the part that you guys want, the part that you're here for, all of you degenerates, start your end engines. Yeah, this is actually is not going to be that degenerate. Um, this is really not going to be degenerate at all. Uh, we have a stock, a stock called DEFTF. Uh, really rolls off the tongue, but its actual name is DeFi uh, Tech. I think it's DeFi Technology. Let me, let me double check that here. Yeah, here we go. DeFi Technologies. You can see up here in the top left, DEFTF is the ticker. And they just dropped an absolutely monster earnings. Um, they blew out their earnings. And I actually picked up this stock a few weeks ago. I'm, you know, my price that I got into is not too far off from where it is right now. But this uh, is an on-chain business that's publicly traded and they just have monstrous revenues. I think it's quite a gem. You know, honestly, I think like the worst case here, if we get a cycle, is that we get sort of a three to five dollar, you know, a couple X's from here. Uh, but I also think that this particular product could see, you know, prices as high as seven to ten dollars, if not uh, significantly higher than that, maybe even as high as fifteen dollars. There's really not a big premium on the revenue they're bringing in. They're bringing in a gargantuan amount of earnings. So they had a total net income of sixty six million versus their twelve point seven million dollar forecast. So they, they almost five X or four X here. Their yeah yeah five yeah, x their total forecasted income for the last quarter that's a massive blowout that's a five hundred percent blowout this is not small potatoes blowout uh, so they're really doing a lot more that the street actually doesn't value so it's always important when you see businesses like Coinbase and other ones in the stock market that are crypto related that during the bull market all of a sudden when Wall Street becomes super friendly towards crypto and starts actually going behind the curtains and extrapolating multiples on earnings like they do for every other company well that's when you get these monstrous pumps in the crypto related stocks and I think that this one is a massive massive gem. It's a much smaller, you know, project, of course, than Coinbase. But this is, to me, a, a smaller cap that I am heavily invested into. I hope that we get to uh, five to 10 bucks here as a base case. Uh, but I could see this going uh, up to 15 to 20 bucks. If we get a full on crypto cycle and this thing gets dragged into uh, the crypto FOMO loop, I think this thing could perform insanely well. And again, this is an on-chain business, mostly on Solana. They have a tremendous amount of repeatable revenue. You could see last quarter, $66 million. It's quite a little banger here. So check this thing out, I think it's worth your attention. Again, if the market dumps, this thing will dump too. So make no mistake, this isn't safe from crypto volatility. But if you're looking for a little stock market gem here that's attached to crypto, a la Coinbase and similar stocks, this to me is one. Next, this is the biggest news. Again, people have been sleeping on crypto gaming. It's been kind of decaying since the beginning of the year, but a spark is coming and a spark is coming to a super verse partner. One of, like I said, the biggest games that is coming to this entire ecosystem off the grid, they are now having their betas on Xbox and PS5. I actually have it installed on PS5. I'm not legally allowed to show you any screen captures or whatever. There's all this NDA stuff. But by the end of this year, I believe this is going to be fully live. And this is a true AAA banger. The people I've talked to, the huge game makers of legendary Titanic proportion. Everybody's excited for this game. People think it's a real gem. Of course, it's going up against the Call of Duties and the hardcore shooters. This is a proper AAA. And if this thing really takes off, you could see tens of millions of players accumulating NFTs and crypto 
window inside a video game in a AAA experience, all of the buttons that we've been waiting for. Again, this is a Superverse partner. So make no mistake, Superverse has partnered with the best of the best. I wasn't playing when I told you Superverse was going to be everywhere. This is a massive, massive one. So just know this could be the spark that sets off the crypto gaming nuke. I think this is a big deal and you absolutely should be following off the grid. I'm sure you are if you're following this channel, but just know this is coming. It's coming soon. And uh, they're going to have a live beta this weekend that I'll play. I'll give you some, some reactions, some verbal sort of anecdotal reactions. I can't show it. I can't capture it, but I can promise you I'm so excited for this. Like genuinely, unabashedly, I cannot wait to sit on the couch and go hard on this on my PlayStation. I mean, come on guys. We've literally been praying for times like this. I've been praying for times like this since 2018, a real hot dope game that has smart integrations for crypto. I'm really a big fan. Shout out to Off The Grid. Let's see them cook. I'm an investor. I'm an advisor. They're partner with Superverse. I am hugely invested and betting on this one. Now, finally, I would just keep your eyes on Telegram. Like, look at this chart. Yes, it's dipped or whatever, but from all time highs, it's it's like 20% off. That's so much better than most alts right now. This thing has been so unbelievably tightly held. People do not want to sell their ton. You can see that it's, uh, it's recent low was so much higher than its prior low. Like the chart still looks good. And if you're looking on Telegram, what you'll know is that there are these little Telegram mini apps that have been racking up hundreds of millions of players. Granted, a lot of those are probably bots, but there is something really cooking in the ton ecosystem with getting little crypto apps like properly distributed across the world. And once there is something that actually tips from, you know, just a clicker, just sort of a spam thing into actually having some real engagement, I think Ton will be one of the biggest beneficiaries of crypto gaming. Be on the lookout for Superverse to announce some cool little Ton experiments over the next few weeks and months. Uh, certainly an area that I think is gonna be hot for crypto gaming and for crypto as a whole. You guys know my belief, crypto gaming is the gateway to crypto and crypto gaming is going to eat the internet. That's just my belief is that crypto gaming will be that gateway for billions of users. And so all of the little funnels that bring people into crypto gaming are super hotspots that I am very focused on. Again, this is my leveraged bet on crypto is crypto gaming. I'm very, very, very bullish and very excited about the coming period here as there's so many high quality titles, so many interesting things happening behind the scenes, even during these spiritual low points in the market. But let's not sugarcoat things. The markets and the charts look really bad. Alts have been getting absolutely obliterated. We have constant threats, you know, the government's dumping Bitcoin. There's still tons of what feels like unfair and, and hostile regulation against the industry. But nonetheless, we persist. And nonetheless, I believe that this is that spiritual low point where you close your eyes and you, and you take a bet and you bet on destiny, you bet on fate here, because that's just my belief is that this is where this market's going. Again, there's a chance that this doesn't work out. That's not what I believe is going to happen. It's something we should all be aware of. That said, I do think that we are enduring what I think of as one of the hardest periods that I've ever seen in crypto. The builders feel demotivated. The industry's filled with all this toxicity and negativity. The meme coins, which were apparently the renegade revenge trade answer, have fallen flat. Now the question is what comes next? And I believe it's the main event, the bull run that we've been waiting for. And while it might not happen tomorrow, I believe very strongly it's coming. I sincerely hope this video has had a tremendous amount of value. Again, if it was worth the wait here, waiting, actually now probably one of the longest gaps I've had in my YouTube career, please, please drop me a like, share the video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And as always, I'll see you very soon on the next episode.